Okay, we are on lesson 5.3. We're going to talk about angle bisector theorem and its converse. Now, we just did, back in lesson 5.2, we did perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. So, they're kind of the kind of same idea, but obviously we're dealing with angles instead of segments. Okay, so, same thing. We're, we're going to prove these theorems work by doing triangles congruent and CPCTC and all that stuff. Now, the other ones are like eight steps long. These ones are actually a little bit longer. They're both ten steps long. Okay, so make sure you got plenty of paper. Copy your picture down, and let's get ready to go with our, our proof. Okay, so we're going to prove these triangles are congruent. We're going to start with our given, which is that we have an angle bisector. Now, I know I've already got the angles marked, but that's not going to be our given. It is going to be step two, basically, though. All right, here we go. Statements, reasons. So... Ray AD, remember, an angle bisector has to be a ray. So ray AD is the angle bisector of, it's gonna be the big angle, so angle BAC. That is my given. Now there's some other givens here, these little boxes. Remember those little boxes? It tells me that segment DB is perpendicular to ray AB. A given. Also, segment DC is perpendicular to ray AC. That's a given. All right. Now, what does it mean when I say bisect? It means to do what again? It means to cut something in half, right? So I'm cutting this big angle BAC in half. So that means I've got little angles: angle BAD and angle CAD. And what has to be true about those two angles? Bisect means they're congruent. Definition of an angle bisector. Or you could just say definition of a bisector. Okay, there's my A for angle. Well, I need some more stuff. Let's see. Let's talk about this given. Well, if DB is perpendicular here, what does that tell me about that angle B up there? Now, I'm not going to just say angle B, though, because there's two different Bs. So I'm going to use three letters. Angle D... I can't write right now. Let's try that again. Angle DBA is a right angle. Why? Definition of perpendicular. At perpendicular, I named one right angle. Okay. What about this one? Angle DCA is also a right angle. Definition of perpendicular. Now some of you might say, well, Mr. Oates, you named two different right angles. How can that be definition? I thought that had to be the theorem that says perpendicular lines form four right angles. Well, this says perpendicular, and I named one right angle. This says perpendicular, and I named one right angle. Okay, so I named one right angle for each time that I had perpendicular. So that's why it's just definition. I don't need to use the theorem. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, what do we know about these two angles? Well, if they're both right angles, they have to be what? They have to be congruent. Angle DBA is congruent to angle DCA. We've been doing this. We did this on the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. Okay, what's that reason? Right angle congruence theorem. Put an A for angle off the side. I have all these things marked so far. So, now got to get a side. Remember, there's no angle, angle, angle. So I have to have a side somewhere in here. What side's the easy side? Okay, you guys should know this by now. AD is congruent to AD. Now, I didn't say ray AD, just segment AD. Reflexive property of congruence. We've been doing this a long time. If you guys don't have reflexive property figured out by now, we've got major problems. Okay, that's a side. Mark it up. Okay, I have two angles on a side. It might be angle side angle order. Or it might be angle angle side. So let's take a look at the picture. Is the side between the angles? Okay, if you look at that picture there. Is this side stuck between this angle and this angle? No. That's the side there that's stuck between the angles. It's not stuck between them. So it's not angle side angle. It's got to be angle angle side. Remember, angle angle side is a theorem. Now, that helps me prove triangles are congruent. 
Okay. So triangle, I'm going to go with BAD. Triangle, well, what matches BAD? We'd have to say what? We'd have to say CAD. And finally, step 10, remember, as soon as we say triangles are congruent, we always finish it off with CPCTC, right? So what am I going to say is congruent? Well, I got some options. I could say side AB is congruent to side AC, not the ray, just the sides. But I'm not going to say that. I could say this angle right here, angle BDA, is congruent to angle CDA. It's not what I'm going to say. I could say side BD is congruent to side CD. That's what we're going to do. BD is congruent to CD. This right here is congruent to that right there. That, those 10 steps, prove what's called the angle bisector theorem. Okay, so let's talk about it. The angle bisector theorem says if a point, this point right here, point D in our picture, lies on the bisector, ray AD, of an angle, the big angle, angle BAC, then the point, remember that point was D, is the same perpendicular distance. Now, the book just says is equidistant, same distance. They don't mention this word perpendicular. They assume that you know it's important. I'm not going to assume anything. This word is extremely important. If you don't have perpendicular, this theorem does not work. So this is very, very, very important right here. Perpendicular. Very important. Okay. Perpendicular distance to the two sides of the angle. What are the two sides? Side AC and side AB. Well, let's come back here. What are those two distances? Well, the distance from D to this side is DB. And from D to this side is DC. And it has to be the same. Same means they have to be congruent. So we just said right here, DB, BD, same thing. Okay? See how they're the same? CD, DC, same thing. Okay, that's what this theorem is saying. Those two things are congruent. Now, it doesn't work if you don't have right angles. Let me draw this. If I give you a picture that looks like this, and I say, okay, this is an angle bisector, and here's a segment, and it comes out here, and this comes out here, so maybe W, X, Y, Z, okay? So if I got something like that, so we know that Y is on the angle bisector, a point, in this case point Y, is on the bisector of an angle then y has to be the same perpendicular distance to the two sides. So yx and yz, do they have to be congruent? Some of you said yes. You're wrong. The answer is no, because it doesn't show they're perpendicular. Okay? If it doesn't show that you have right angles, then back in our proof, I have no way to say the angles are congruent because I can't use the right angle congruence theorem because they're not right angles. So if I don't know these are perpendicular, I can't do this proof. Now, as soon as they put this in here, it's like that, and it's gotta be on both. It can't just be on one, it's gotta be on both. Then I know that that right there and that right there are congruent. And they might do some algebra. I'm gonna do kind of an easy one, three X plus one, and 16. So 3x plus 1 equals 16. Subtract the 1. 3x equals 15. Divide by the 3. x equals 5. I'm going to put units. I think I forgot to do that a couple times in lesson 2, lesson 5.2. Let's check it. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. 16 and 16, it makes sense. We are good, okay? But remember, if you don't have the right angles, it doesn't work, okay? All right, let's look at the converse. All right, so now I've got the right angles again. Converse doesn't work if you don't have the right angles. You have to have the right angles no matter what. But you'll notice I don't have any marks over here, but I do have the marks here. Remember last time I had the marks here, I didn't have any marks here. Okay, I still have to have the right angles though. Because remember, a converse is backwards. 
Okay, so we're going to work this thing backwards. We're still going to prove we have congruent triangles. So I'm going to go statements and reasons. This is, I think, is 10 steps again. So, nice long proof. Start with what we know. Start with our givens. KL is congruent to ML, given. It's already marked S for side. Okay, my other given, I got perpendicular. So LK, perpendicular to ray JK, definition of perpendicular, or, sorry, no, that's a given. We're gonna use definition of perpendicular here in just a little bit. LM, perpendicular to JM, given. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and use our definition of perpendicular. So, angle LKJ has to be what kind of angle? It has to be a right angle. Definition of perpendicular. Angle LMJ, this one down here, also has to be a right angle. Once again, definition of perpendicular. Okay, now, once again, some of you might say, well, Mr. Roach, you named two different right angles. Wouldn't I have to use the theorem that says perpendicular lines form for right eight, four right angles? No. One for that, one for that. Okay, definition. Now, since they're both right angles, I can say they're congruent. Angle L, K, J is congruent. Angle L, M, J, right angle congruence theorem. A for angle. All right, we're missing something. We need another angle or another side. Should be really easy. Just did it in the last one. Is there something that's going to be really easy to get? Yep, this thing right here, remember? JL congruent to JL. Reflexive property of congruence. Got to know how to use your reflexive property of congruence whenever things double up like that. It's used in both triangles. Okay, S for side. Now this kind of looks like side angle side. Let's look over here. It's definitely not side angle side angle is not between the sides. It's side, side, angle. Side, side, angle doesn't work though, does it? So instead of side, side, angle, we gotta think about it. Is, it, is the angle a right angle? It is. So when the angle's a right angle, we call it HL. Okay, triangles. I'm gonna name the first one, I'm gonna go with uh, JKL gotta match it. So what would match up with JKL? Okay, if you're looking at that picture there, what matches with JKL? Be JML. What do we use most of the time right after we prove triangles are congruent? We use CPCTC, right? And now, lots of different things I could name. I got three pieces I could name. I could name angle KLJ and MLJ. I'm not gonna do that. I could name angle KJL and MJL. That's actually what I'm gonna do. Or I can name JK and JM. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go with these angles right here. Angle KJL is congruent to angle MJL. Remember, CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So these two angles are corresponding. They're in the same spot. Okay, one of them's right here. One's right there. I already proved the triangles are congruent in step eight. So those two angles have to be congruent. Now, why would I want to name those angles are congruent? Remember, we're proving a converse theorem, right? Converse means I switch the order. If a point is on the bisector, that's going to come at the end. Hey. If I know these angles are congruent, do I have an angle bisector? I do. Ray JL is the bisector of angle, well, which angle? It's gotta be the big angle, angle KJM. Well, how do we know that? Well, because the angles are congruent. And if the angles are congruent, I must've cut them in half. The definition of an angle 
bisector. And that's it, we proved it. Okay, so what did we prove? We proved the angle bisector converse theorem. So let's take a look. If a point, point L, is the same perpendicular, do we have perpendicular? Once again, this is really, really, really important right here. Okay, if you don't have this, it doesn't work. Okay, do we have perpendicular? We do. Okay, same perpendicular distance to the sides. Well, what are the sides? The sides are ray JK and ray JM. JK and JM. And what's the distance, that same distance? It's LK and LM. LK, LM, and they are congruent, right? Same means congruent, right there. Very beginning, that was my given, okay? So if a point, L, is the same distance, LK and LM, LK this way, LK, LM that way, perpendicular, it's gotta be perpendicular, to the sides of my angle, then that point, L, Go back here, which angle are we talking about? Big angle, KJM. Then that point L is on the bisector. So what's the bisector? L's gotta be on it, it's gotta start at the vertex, so it's gotta be ray JL of the angle. Big angle again, KJM. Okay, now, just like we did on the other one, if I draw you a picture like this, and I say, okay, I'm not going to tell you it's a bisector. That's what you got to try to figure out. And I do this. Let's get some letters here. P, Q, R, S. And I tell you these are congruent. Does that tell me, sorry, it's out of the frame. There we go. If I tell you that these are congruent, Q, R, and R, S, does that tell me that P, R is the angle bisector? If you said yes, you're wrong. This word, very, very, very important. Do I have that anywhere? Is there anything that's perpendicular? Nope. Now what if I do this? Okay, now I've got perpendicular, right? Not enough. I have to have it in both spots. Okay, now, now I've got it. Now my theorem is going to work. Well, what's it telling me, Mr. Oates? It tells me that that is congruent to that. Okay, maybe there's some algebra. Maybe it's you know, 2x plus 7. Maybe it's 23 degrees. So 2x plus 7 equals 23. Subtract the 7. 2x equals 16. Divide by 2. x equals 8. I'm not going to put units on this because it's not a length. I might put degrees because it's an angle. And there's no, there's no degree symbol already up here with it. So maybe 8 degrees. But if you don't have these perpendicular marks in there, it doesn't work. Because without those perpendicular marks, I can't use HL. I don't have right angles. And HL only works if the angle is a right angle. Okay, so make sure you understand that these perpendicular marks, whether you're using the regular theorem or the converse, those perpendicular marks are very, very important. Okay, that's it for lesson 5.3, angle bisector theorem. It's converse, but make sure you have watched... Um, the other part of 5.3, the compass work, angle bisectors meeting at a point called the in-center. So you can make sure you can do that compass work. All right? So that's it for us in 5.3.